All right, we move west, where in the U.S., President Biden's administration hopes to use a gathering of 50 African delegations in Washington to uplift and empower African institutions, citizens, and nations. Participants in the U.S.-Africa Leaders Summit will spend three days in Washington discussing the challenges, needs, and hopes of one-fifth of the world's population. This year's summit, which begins tomorrow, will focus on deepening and expanding the long-term U.S.-Africa partnership. And to look at this in more detail, we're joined by Arise U.S. correspondent Eric Hamm, who's in Washington. Hello, Eric. Welcome to the show. Now, this is a high-profile event. Tell us what's on the agenda. Yeah, it's a pretty ambitious agenda that we're seeing from the White House with these 49 leaders uh, that will be descending on Washington this week. And we know that one of the uh, major issues that will be on the, the agenda will actually be the, the issue of space. We know that the United States is uh, spending and investing billions. And we know that also they want to, that President Biden wants to bring uh, many African nations aboard uh, what they are doing on, around this issue. And we know in addition to that, uh, there are two key issues that we know the Biden administration is going to be focusing on. One is actually ensuring that African nations have a seat at the table at the G20, as well as we know that the Biden administration wants to also expand on the U.N. Security Council. Now, of course, we know that right now both China and Russia are actually seeking to push back uh, on the expansion of uh, uh, in, in inviting other countries to be involved in the UN Security Council. They believe that, in fact, it will perhaps uh, eliminate or diminish their 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 authority on the on that committee. But we know that what we're seeing from the Biden administration is they want to actually expand and ensure that uh, Africa as a whole has a seat at the table. In addition to that, we know some other issues that the administration will be focusing on includes uh, both uh, climate change as well as uh, economic and global security. And of course, uh, the, the, the Biden administration wants to focus to ensure that African nations have what they need to continue to combat COVID as well. So a very ambitious agenda, also a very full agenda in terms of the issues that we know will be addressed this week. Well said, Eric. Now, given the recent rapid expansion of China's influence on, on the continent, can you walk us, walk us through on why this event matters so much to the United States? Well, it's very interesting because this is an event that actually hasn't happened in eight years since, Pre since President Barack Obama was in office. Uh, we did not see the level of engagement that we're seeing that's going to take place this week throughout the the Trump administration. However, what we're seeing by the Biden administration is that they believe that Africa needs to be engaged. But also what we have seen from the Biden administration is an effort to try to play catch up, particularly with the ongoing investment that China has made in Africa, particularly with its uh, Belt and Road Initiative. And so what we're seeing from the United States is not only a lip service, which is something that the United States certainly has played for quite some time, but what we're seeing from the Biden administration is an actual doubling down on both resources and rhetoric in terms of engagement. And of course, no more greater investment than you can see then, in fact, the 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 administration now bringing all of these uh, global African countries uh, to the United States for this full on dialogue that, of course, looks to be a down payment on what the Biden administration wants to see take place, not only today, but actually moving forward between now and the and, and, and the years to come between the United States and the entire African continent, but not just between the United States. And, and, and Africa in terms of unilateral engagement, but also what we're seeing is the United States under the Biden administration actually attempting to lead other nations to and, and other countries to ensure that Africa is seen as a major and global player on the, globe, on the, on the global stage. That's right. Also looks a lot like the Africa-Russia summit that took place in 2019. But can we expect any big decisions over the next few days off of the U.S.-Africa summit? Yeah, that's a really good question. Oftentimes, you know, when you see events like this happen, and of course, a, a lot of the details take place afterwards. And of course, after 
after those decisions are made, of course, the question becomes, you know, what next? And so, again, what we're seeing here is uh, the administration, I think, beginning not only those those talks, but also beginning uh, to to make the initial investment uh, on the ground in many of these countries. Well, Eric, what can the Biden administration hope to achieve at the summit? I think what the Biden administration wants to do is the Biden administration wants to be able to showcase to the world that, one, there needs to be a seat at the table, first and foremost, for the continent. But also what the administration is also signaling not only uh, to the rest of the world, but, but, but also to the United States, particularly lawmakers in terms of those who have access to, to precious funding and resources, is that uh, Africa is a global player that needs to be that, that needs to have a, a, a not only a seat at the table, the table, but is also uh, on a level playing field with the rest of the world. And I think that's uh, critical, particularly when you look at uh, how the Biden administration elevated Ukraine in terms of what's happening between in the war with Ukraine and Russia and how the Biden administration used a lot of its 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 goodwill, but also uh, the Biden administration used a lot of its political capital to ensure that uh, the rest of the West was equally uh, was equally engaged. And I think that's what we're seeing t take place here uh, with this summit: is the United States it's putting its own capital on the line to say to the rest of the world that Africa is a place that needs to be focused on. Africa is a place that needs to be a priority. Africa is a place that we need to get engaged in. And the fact that now you have the two biggest global economies, both the United States and China, uh, making this making this play, uh, I think that signals to the rest of the world that that Africa is a place to be reckoned with. And I think it's something that the rest of the world is going to recognize. Of, of course, the United States is actually playing catch up where we know uh, China, of course, uh, and as well as the rest of the West, has been equally as engaged uh, in Africa. It's now the United States playing catch up. But nevertheless, given the fact that the United States is still seen as a global power, that does sing, send a pretty powerful signal. Absolutely. Of course, Africa is open for business. Eric Ham, a RISE U.S. correspondent, thank you so much for your insight on that. And uh, we hope you can help us keep tabs on that.